Hi, this is Brendan. So you've got through your cataract surgery. Well done. This is a post-operative video that you can watch here in recovery or also watch at home as a tool and an information resource to make your recovery safe, to make it easy and as stress-free as possible for you so that you can come back to this if you have any questions about what you need to do, what you can and can't do and what you should expect after your cataract surgery. So what should you expect in the first 24 hours? The really important thing here to appreciate is that every eye is different. If this is your first cataract operation, then the video will cover everything that you should expect. If this is your second cataract operation, then please remember that every eye is different and the recovery from this eye may be very different to the recovery from your first eye. Typically when you wake up in recovery, you will have a shield over your eye and that's to protect the eye so that you don't rub it. The shield should be worn in your sleep for about the first three nights, just in case you decide that your eye is irritated in your sleep and give it a good rub. Occasionally, if you're allergic to the adhesive tapes that come in your little post-operative pack, you'll have a special elasticized shield that covers both eyes. But for most patients, just using the tape that you have in your pack just when you're asleep in bed, or if you have a sleep during the day for three days, is more than enough to adequately protect the eye to make sure that you don't rub it in your sleep. As I say, you do not have to wear it during the day unless you particularly want to. One of the things to remember about post-operative discomfort is that you have had an eye operation. The local anaesthetic that we put in your eye will wear off after about 25 to 30 minutes from the surgery. So that means that I've performed an operation on your eye, I have made a little incision in the eye. And some people will say, my eye barely feels uncomfortable at all. I wouldn't really know I've had anything done. And other people will really say, well, Brendan, I actually do feel like you did make an incision on the surface of my eye with a blade. And of course I have. This is perfectly normal. Some people will have a perfectly painless eye for their first operation and really quite an uncomfortable eye for their second operation. Again, variation between eyes and between people is perfectly normal. So... If your eye is irritated, start up your lubricating drops. They're very handy and effective for this. But also just go home, have some regular analgesia, whatever you normally take, some paracetamol or some neurofin or even both. Often just having a lie down and a sleep makes you feel much better. A lot of people will be exhausted when they get home. Sometimes the stress of the surgery or the lingering effects of the sedation can just make you very tired. So just having a good old sleep often makes you feel much better. You wake up rejuvenated and that I should be feeling a lot better afterwards. A little bit like discomfort after surgery, some people will have a perfectly white and uninflamed eye, and some people will have a very red and inflamed eye. It's perfectly okay, it can vary between people and again, vary between eyes. Of course, your pupil will have been dilated for the surgery for me to do the cataract operation through, so don't be alarmed at all if your pupil is very big, and this can sometimes stay reasonably large for 24 hours even, and the night of your surgery, lights will look very bright. They'll be very blurry, and there'll be wheels around lights, and everything will have starbursts. Perfectly normal for you to experience all of this when you have a large pupil, and as I say, that should just wear off over the next 24 hours. You shouldn't expect to have perfectly good vision a few hours after you have a cataract operation. It takes normally at least 24 hours to clear up, or sometimes days, just depending on a bunch of factors. Some people will have fabulous vision the next day after their cataract surgery, and some people will have really bad vision the next day after their cataract surgery. That just depends on the size of your eye and how bad the cataract was. Sometimes I need to put a lot of energy into the eye with the special machine that breaks up the cataract, and that will cause swelling at the front of the eye that can take days to clear up. So a lot of patients will say they have quite misty or cloudy vision for a few days. Some people have quite a soft cataract or a very large eye, meaning there's more room inside the eye for me to do the operation and more room to disperse the energy that I use to break up the cataract. And so they may have excellent vision the next day. Again, it can vary between eyes and enormously between patients. So you don't need to be alarmed if you have a friend or family member who said, look, I could see perfectly after the cataract op operation, there must be something wrong. It's enormously variable. So what can you expect in the first few days after the operation? Two of the most common things that people will say they experience are glare, that is more significant than what they had prior to the cataract operation, and sensitivity to light. 
there's a common misconception in the community that the sunglasses that hospitals tend to give you after cataract operations are medically necessary. They are definitely not medically necessary. They are definitely not fashionable and they are definitely not cool. They are great because they enable you to go outside without the fear of rubbing your eye. So from that perspective, they're good. You don't need to wear a shield under them and they also tend to fit over glasses. But really, that's where the positives end. So you only need to wear sunglasses if you want to. You can wear any sunglasses that you want, your favorite pair. It doesn't matter how dark they are as long as they block ultraviolet light and they make you comfortable. You can wear some really cool ones like these or more protective ones like these, but as long as you feel comfortable in them, it's nice to have a little bit of pizzazz and a little bit of style. And for so many patients, it will be the first time you're able to get sunglasses that don't have a prescription in them. Just wear whatever you like, whatever makes you feel comfortable. And of course, nobody needs to wear sunglasses at night time unless they're famous or a rock star. A common thing for people to notice after the surgery is that they have a white lump or a deposit underneath their lower eyelid in each eye. If you look up and pull your eyelid down, you'll see a white lump. This is the slow release steroid that I use in a lot of patients to avoid the need for using regular steroid drops for weeks or even a couple of months after the surgery. Don't be alarmed if you see it there. It will slowly dissolve over a couple of months. That's perfectly normal, and it's just reducing your need for drops postoperatively. Some people will have a perfectly white eye after the surgery, but some people have a quite a red eye that looks like this. This is called a subconjunctival hemorrhage. Think of the eye as a white table that's covered with a clear tablecloth. If there's one little drop of blood, or, or in the table's example tomato sauce, between the white table and the clear tablecloth, it spreads around and looks very scary. The same happens on the surface of the eye. You can get bleeding like this just as soon as I touch your eye with the surgery, when we hold it with forceps or any of the other instruments used in the operation. And it's really quite common to get a bleeding area such as this. These eyes look very scary, but it never ever does any harm at all. And the blood will settle down by itself over days to a couple of weeks. The blood will often go orange and then yellow and your eye will turn, return to being white and normal. It looks scary as I say, but no cause for concern or alarm at all. It's very common for people to say that they felt they had a lot of allergies after the operation and their nose was very dry and they were sneezing a lot. This is extremely unlikely to actually be allergies. It's probably just that the oxygen that we place on little nasal prongs that goes up your nose during the operation has dried out your nasal passages. We used to be able to humidify this oxygen, but infection control measures and rules have meant we're not able to do this. So as the oxygen goes up there, it really can dry the nasal passages out for people. I find the best solution to this is not oral antihistamines because they tend to dry things out more. Just steam up your nasal passages. A lot of people just go into their bathroom, close their eyes, turn the exhaust fan off and sort of turn the shower on hot to steam things up for a little bit. We can do the old remedy of just a, uh, a bowl of hot water with a towel over the top. But I think the bathroom is easier and works better and it really will improve things very quickly. But as I say, it's dryness. Don't take antihistamines for it because they just tend to dry things out more. A lot of people are a little bit concerned by the fact that they have a flickering light in their peripheral vision. It's often out to the side in each eye. This is really, really common and it tends to settle down over a couple of weeks or occasionally even a few weeks, but normally it's settled by a couple of weeks quite quickly. There's no cause for concern with this. You'll often notice it immediately the day after surgery, but it should settle down by itself without you needing to do anything or to be alarmed about it at all. I know that eye drops after cataract surgery are annoying and sometimes logistically difficult, so I'll minimize them as much as I possibly can for you. Everyone will need lubricating drops and we'll go through that, but some people will need anti-inflammatories, some people will even need two. The nurses in recovery will give you a tick box sheet to facilitate your compliance with that to make it easier. Almost nobody needs antibiotic drops after cataract surgery. We inject the volume and the equivalent of an entire bottle of antibiotic drops into and around the eye at the time of surgery. So adding drops onto the top of that really doesn't add anything at all. Wash your hands before you do your eye drops and there are different techniques. Some people find that it's easiest to pull their eyelid down and to drop the eye into the little sack that uh, appears when you pull your eyelid down. 
If your skin is a little bit more loose, there'll be a larger sack there that makes that a little bit easier. Some people need someone else to do their drops for them, and that's understandable as well. You'll see here a technique that I've used with people over time. There's me there just lying down. You can tell my forehead needs a bit of Botox, but I've just lied down flat, used the bridge of my nose for the little notch on the eye drop bottle, put a couple of drops in, had a blink, and some will always go into your eye. It's okay if some of the drops sting a tiny bit at the start, that's pretty normal. One of the biggest problems after cataract surgery is dry eye, and people never say my eye feels dry and gritty. They say my vision fluctuates, my vision gets better when I blink, my eyes feel fatigued, my eyelids are heavy, my eyelids are droopy, or funnily enough, I've excessive, water, excessive watering of the eyes, and that's because the tears can be unstable. There are a lot of causes of this. Dry eyes are much more common in people with rosacea, a skin disease where you get some broken capillaries on the skin and a little bit red across the cheeks and the nose. Dry eye is almost universal in postmenopausal women. It's actually very rare for you not to have it. And there are things we can do to address that if it becomes a problem. And it's more common in people who use Botox. It really dries out the production of tears. People on CPAP machines tend to get drier eyes than people who aren't on CPAP machines. And there's a lot of other medications that can give you dry eye after cataract surgery as well. So remember the symptoms of dry eyes are fluctuating vision and tired eyes. And it's important to understand the mechanism of this. When your eyes are dry, your tears become salty. Salty tears then damage the surface of the eye and the surface of your eye is involved in making healthy tears. That makes the tears saltier, which damage the surface of the eye more, which makes the eye drier. Drier, saltier, damage. And you get a vicious cycle, so it's important that we break that cycle. And some tear drops or some lubricants with your post-operative pack. It's really important to use these. People get that dry eye for two, three, and occasionally four months after surgery, but it should settle down to what it was if you lubricate the eye. So it's important to use those lubricants to dilute the saltiness of the tears to let your tears get back to normal. There's lots of different types of lubricants, and I've got a few good ones here. Generally ones that are preservative-free are very effective. There's watery ones, there's oily ones, and there's combination ones. And I will often have picked the one that I feel will be the most appropriate for you, but I'm very happy for you to mix and match. They're all available over the counter at a pharmacy without a prescription. Some of them are cheaper if you have a healthcare card. Remember, no eye rubbing. It's really important not to rub your eyes for a few days after surgery. Aim for a week, and of course wear that shield in your sleep for three nights after the operation. So let's cover what you can and what you cannot do after your cataract operation. One of the most common misconceptions after your cataract surgery is that you can't have a shower or wash your hair. That is not true. If when you normally shower, you stand in the shower and look straight up at the shower head with the water going straight into your eyes and you regularly get shampoo or conditioner in your eyes, you shouldn't do that, but you probably need to look at how you shower anyway. If you just have a normal shower, and water trickles over your closed eyes, and you've never got shampoo or conditioner in your eyes to the point that they sting, and you don't rub your eyes in the shower, just shower normally after your cataract surgery as you did beforehand. Yes, you can wash your hair. Yes, you can shower as you usually do. It is perfectly okay to lift up your grandchildren after your surgery. Just make sure they don't poke you in the eyes. You can carry your grocery bags, and you can go to the gym and lift weights. Maybe just make sure you don't go too overboard. It's perfectly okay to do yoga. I don't know why any sane person on earth would want to play golf, but it is perfectly reasonable to go out onto the golf course and to play around. It's okay to play contact sports two weeks after you finish your cataract operation. Just don't do it earlier than that. It's perfectly okay to garden, but within limits. You don't need to be shoveling manure, but if you're doing some light gardening, that is perfectly okay. Just try and keep your face clean so that you're not getting dirt and muck into the eye. It's okay to go cycling. That's no problem at all, but probably not if you're doing it like this. I really do like you to wait four weeks until you swim after your operation, probably three if you're in a clean pool and you're wearing goggles so water doesn't go into the eyes. And eye makeup, it's very important to wait a week. Eye makeup can be dirty, it can have bugs in it, and removing it involves you rubbing your eyes. So it's important to wait a full seven days. Emergencies after cataract surgery are actually very rare, but if you do have one, please contact me directly. 
you can either contact me during business hours on the Queensland Eye Institute number 32395000 or after hours or weekends, contact me on my mobile number, which you'll have in your post-operative pack. During the day, I'm often in theatre where I won't have mobile phone reception and I don't tend to check my phone throughout the day. So please, during business hours, contact the Queensland Eye Institute. People often say, well, how will I know it's an emergency? If you're worried, just contact me. It's not a problem at all. But the two things we're worried about are an infection and problems in the retina. Infections are extremely rare after cataract surgery, one in many thousand. And that's because, remember, at the time of the operation, I will have injected antibiotics into your eye and around your eye. Almost the equivalent or even a little bit more of an entire bottle of antibiotic drops goes into and around your eye at the time of the operation. And of course, the procedure is sterile. An infection would give you a very painful eye. Looking at lights would be very, very painful. The vision would be terrible and the eye would be very, very red. You really need to contact me straight away in the extremely unlikely event that that happens. The other thing we look for are problems in the retina after a cataract operation. If you feel that your vision is just genuinely not right, there's some kind of curtain coming across your vision, that you really felt there was some kind of serious and impending problem to your vision, just contact me, it's not a problem at all. So what are the things you don't have to worry about after cataract surgery? The main one is something called a subconjunctival hemorrhage. Think of the eye as a white plastic table covered with a clear tablecloth. A little bit of blood between the table and the tablecloth spreads out and looks very, very scary. This is called a subconjunctival hemorrhage. They're really common after cataract surgery. They can obviously be there the next day after surgery, or they can appear a couple of months later. And they look really nasty, but they absolutely do no harm at all and settle down by themselves just over a few days or a week or so. People will often get one or two of them, and then that little blood vessel that was weak or broken tends to sclerose up and not cause bleeding again. If you're unsure about a problem after your operation, just let me know it's not a problem at all. If it's after hours on a weekend, it's perfectly okay to send me a text message, but I do just ask that you put your name, when you had your surgery, and what you had done on the text message. I don't have everyone's contact number in my phone. They're in my electronic medical record system, not in my contacts on the phone. So I often get a message that just says, I have a red eye, should I be worried? That's not particularly helpful to me because I won't know who you are or anything about you really. And I don't keep all my old text messages in the phone. So by all means, send me a text message. Just put your name, put your date of birth if you need to in case there's someone with a very similar name and just tell me what operation you had done, when you had it done and your specific concern. And it's perfectly okay to send me a photograph as well if you're worried and just want to show me something. Not a problem at all, that's my job, I'm here to help. But it's much easier if I know who's actually asking me the question. If you lose your prescription or your repeats for your medications, don't worry about that after hours or on a weekend. We can sort that out on a Monday morning. You should have a repeat for any drops that you have in your pack with your post-operative medication pack, or else if it's a special medication, they may have kept it at the Wesley Hospital. You will not need a repeat for your lubricating drops. They're just all available over the counter, and it doesn't have to be the brand that I've given you. You can try different brands. I'm perfectly happy for you just to go and get them. You won't need a prescription at all. A common question is, what do I do with my glasses after surgery? It's a bit tricky. It really depends on the script of your glasses and what lenses we've picked for your surgery. A big problem between having per the first eye done and your second eye done is, what do I do? Do I wear my glasses? Do I not wear my glasses? Just do what is most comfortable for you. If your glasses are fairly weak, you may be able to pop the lens out of one of the frames. You do need to be careful, particularly with higher quality glasses. That may not be easy or even possible to do. Some people, if they have strong glasses, won't be able to pop the lens out of one side. The eye and the brain can only tolerate a certain difference between the eyes. And so if you have really strong glasses prior to surgery, popping one lens out may not actually work and you may feel more uncomfortable popping that out than you do with it in. Occasionally, people who've worn contact lenses can wear contact lens in the other eye between the operation to even them up and be most comfortable. The important thing really is that you do what is most comfortable for you. Once your first eye clears up, you'll probably just use that eye and then ignore the eye that still has the cataract until we get that done. If you need reading glasses after the operation, just get a cheap pair from a pharmacy. Generally, people do plus two for computer or general reading type work. Something a little bit stronger, plus three, generally means that light will be focused about 30 centimeters from your face. So 
That's good for very fine work or reading in bed, where a computer will often be about plus one. These glasses are pretty low quality. You've got a really high quality lens inside your eye, so don't waste that by getting cheap reading glasses in the long term. Go and see your optometrist for a really high quality pair to really give yourself that great vision that we've strived to achieve with your cataract surgery. But just as an interim measure, some glasses from the pharmacy will certainly get you by until you're about four or five weeks after your operation, at which stage your vision will have stabilized and you can go and see your optometrist. A lot of people are very uptight and stressed about having their first eye surgery or their first cataract surgery done. I hope we've made it as relaxing and comfortable for you as possible. If you have any feedback at all or any way that we can improve the processes and improve the surgical experience for you, I'm very, very open to these. So please really feel free to make any suggestions you like. Make them to me directly. If you'd like to make them anonymously, the hospital will give you a feedback form and that form goes straight back to the hospital and is de-identified. So oh, we're always striving to improve the process, but I hope that at least for this instance, you found it quite smooth, quite relaxing and very comfortable.